Welcome to Neuro Stories, the podcast that highlights the people behind neuroscience at the Walton Centre. Together, we'll lift the lid on the complex worlds of neurology, neurosurgery, and everything in between, hearing fascinating tales of the incredible staff and services carried out in the hospital every day. Morning, all. Is Nikki in her office? Morning. Morning. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Hi Sam, yes. I'm Nicola Martin. I'm the Chief Nurse here at the Walton Centre. I'm also the Exec Lead for the AHPs in the organisation and Infection Control and Clinical Governance. So quite a few hats that you wear at the Walton Centre. And AHP means Allied Health Professional, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So that not only means the nurses because you're Chief Nurse, but also the other clinicians, the other clinical uh, parts of the hospital as well. Yeah, physios, OTs, ODPs, okay. dietitians. Why did you decide you wanted to be a nurse? So I originally always wanted to be a midwife from a young age. So my plan was always to do my nurse training and then do the conversion course to midwifery. During my nurse training, I'd done a placement on midwifery and decided it really wasn't for me. It's so useful to have those placements, isn't it? Yeah. To rotate through different specialisms. Yeah. What was it that, that you just thought, no, it's not for me? Yeah, I just thought it, it really wasn't for me. And I, it was general nurse and that I wanted to stay involved in. It was always growing up, either a midwife or a police officer. But as I say, I did go into nursing. So why was that public health kind of caring sort of professions. What was it about those two professions really that made you think, yeah, that's where I want to be? Yeah, I don't think, you know, when you speak to people, sometimes a big event has happened in their life that's made them then want to care for someone. A lot of nurses will tell you, you know, they looked after their nan mm. or their auntie or uncle, and then that's what made them go into nursing. I didn't actually, you know, a reason. I just knew I wanted to be in it a care and profession. Just like a gut feeling that made you think, yeah. I want to I want to get in there and, and care for people. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And where was this? Where did you do your training? So I done my nurse training um, as part of March 99 cohort at Chester University. And what was it like getting stuck into nursing then at that point? It was a, it was a big learning curve for myself because I'd done it straight from sixth form. Um, yeah. A lot of nurses have worked in nursing homes before or they've done some voluntary work. Take some time out to, yeah. to, to work in the yeah. industry but you dove straight in. But I literally straight from sixth form <laughs> um, straight to university so it, it was a, a big learning curve but also it was nice because I didn't have that previous experience so I was taught the right way from the very beginning. That's so important isn't mm. it because then the habits that you have that you develop go into your excellent clinical practice later yeah. isn't it yeah so what led you to uh, the walton center to being chief nurse now um so i qualified in 2002 um i was a hematology nurse right. for approximately around 15 years i wow. stayed in in hematology you know all those those years ago hematology could be a, a difficult speciality to work in right um, and I just felt after 15 years, it was time for me to move on. Again, your gut telling you yeah. it's time to find time something. Time to find something wow. different. Um, and at that point, I had to make that decision whether I wanted to go down the specialist nurse route or if I wanted to go down that managerial route. And it was the managerial leadership route mm. um, that was more appealing to myself. And at that time, you were saying there, specialist or leadership. What were the opportunities like at that time? You know, was it easy to, to move into a, a leadership role? No, well, while I was in haematology, I was the, I did progress to the deputy ward manager. Um, so it was difficult waiting for a ward manager post mm. to, to come up at times. And I did do the ward manager post for a short period, done some bed management, patient flow, um, and then I went into my matron role. Right. So uh, I did decide from a young age that that was it was a leadership managerial route that I wanted to take. And in my previous organisation, I'd been there for twenty three years, so wow. I almost worked my way through those leadership roles. My chief nurse at my previous organisation at the time almost 
gave me that courage to move to a different organisation. You know, she yeah. she said to me, if I did want to become a, a chief nurse, then I did have to go and see and experience other organisations. And then that's when the Walton Centre was advertising for the deputy chief nurse. So I've been here just under three years now. So I first came as the deputy chief nurse and then yeah. recently progressed to the chief nurse. And of course, if I remember correctly, that was around the time COVID was about to... It, I think mm. COVID had just finished. So right. I dealt with COVID in my previous organisation and then yeah. we'd just come out of COVID as I moved to the Walton Centre. Gosh, that was such an extraordinary time. It was extremely difficult and I'm sure a lot of nurses were in ever experience anything like that in their career well, hopefully not. moving forward it was a time when everyone had to really stick together look out for each other so what is it like then being a nurse at the walton center what's your experience been it's a small organization very friendly uh, everybody does tend to know everybody people have been here a long time yeah um it does remind me of hematology in a way in that it's got acute and some long-term conditions, neurology. You know, you, you do see some of the same patients coming through time after time. And haematology was quite like that. You almost mm. become one big family. Yeah, even um, with the patients as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a lovely organisation. It's a great place to work. And what's a, what's a day-to-day look like for you as chief nurse then? Every day is very different. I could be in board all day and um, providing that assurance to the, the board. I could be, I've started doing some clinical shifts now that I've got a full senior nursing team. Fantastic. So I could be going to work on one of the wards. Yeah, I did see your uniform hung up behind the door. Yeah. <laughs> so just in case you were ready to launch into a, a, a shift. What, what's that like working with the, with the nurses as chief nurse? Throughout my whole career, I've always tried to, in all my roles, make sure that I do those clinical shifts. You can't underestimate um, just how much you get from those shifts working alongside the staff. You know, everyone will very openly tell you what they're proud of, why they like working here, but they'll also share some of the difficulties or challenges that they come across that I am then able to bring back with me and see what I can do as a chief nurse to then yeah. support them in, in making that change moving forward. So I think it's really important and it's something that I will always do to make sure that you work alongside the staff to just understand what, what pressures and what, it's, what a day is like yeah. for them too. So I imagine it is really useful for you to have those those clinical shifts where you're working with different teams. It is. It, it's very useful. And some of the ward managers that I've worked on have already, you know, we do laugh because the staff say, don't quarrel with me, don't quarrel <laughs> with me. Um, but hopefully by the end of the shift, I've, you know, I've got a nice rapport with the staff yeah. and hopefully they can see the benefits just as much as I can. And I have made sure if there's something that they have wanted support with, I've made sure I've gone back and, you know, fed that back, what my actions have been. So yeah. hopefully they, they do understand how much, how useful it is. So what, in your with your chief nurse hat on, what's on your kind of bucket list for the next year or so? What are you hoping to get ticked off? Quite a few things. It has been difficult because we've obviously had gaps within the senior nursing team and it's only most recently that I've now got the deputy in post, mm. We've got the lead nurse in post for surgery and we've had gaps in those positions for a long time. So I probably haven't done what I would have envisaged to do um, within you know, the first six months to a year in my post. But now I've got those teams, some of my priorities around, you know, everybody will know I was really passionate about getting our own learning disability nurse yeah. and Lily's started now. So it's yeah. about looking at, what our gaps are in that service, how can we improve that patient experience mm. for our patients with learning disabilities. That's one of um, my priorities. I'm working closely. We've got an away day booked with some of the AHP leads Great. planned for September, hopefully, to just understand what the priority is, what our strategy is for AHPs for the Walton Centre moving forward. And then I've actually got some time away tomorrow with Joe, my deputy, for us to just outline 
what are the priorities for the next 12 months for nursing? So it's quite refreshing then the next couple of months you're going to be able to really focus on that strategic direction as well as the day-to-day. Definitely. So you've alluded to it there about having obviously gaps in the senior nursing team but is that is that the main challenge that because I know that NHS across the the, the country have have a like a nursing problem Workforce. workforce problem do you find that here at the Walton Centre? I think we have got workforce challenges in nursing and AHPs. Um, the therapy lead has put a plan together to yeah. support the AHPs. And we do have student nurses who, you know, we've, we've got lined up to come to the Walton Centre. But I do think we can't almost sit on our laurels. We yeah. have got to make sure we've got a recruitment and retention plan. And one of my objectives... Um, for the chief executive is to make sure that that recruitment and retention plan is developed for the Walton Centre. We've got a lot of specialist nurses at the Walton Centre and yeah. you know so we need to make sure that even the, the staff get that appropriate training and development to to move on into those leadership or specialist nurse roles yeah. internally as well. So what's your what would you say your biggest motivator is at work? It's Definitely patient experience, staff experience and staff development. I think they have always been my three passions in nursing. Nikki, we're going to do the quick fire round now. Are you ready? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What would you be if you weren't a nurse? Police officer. Straight off the bat, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> What's your biggest hobby? Definitely time out with friends and family. Yeah. Switching off and time away. Favourite song? Favourite song, a bit cheesy, but again, when I'm out with the girls, if Gold by Spandau Valley comes on, I mean, um, we love a good dance to that. <laughs> it's a classic. Yeah. Favourite book? I don't have a lot of time to read, if I'm honest, Sam, because I've obviously got a lot of committee papers, board papers to read. Um, but when I'm going on holiday, I do like to have a read maybe of one, a latest autobiography. But again, not anyone in particular, but I just see what's normally out there at the airport and pick something up. Nice. A bit of spontaneous yeah, reading. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Favourite film? Again, a bit cheesy, but probably like growing up, Dirty Dancing. <laughs> It's a classic. Yeah. Favourite animal? I love dogs, um, but I haven't got a dog. Um, my sister's got a dog. Sometimes I, I'll walk her dog. Um, but yeah, it's probably a dog. But again, don't have time. Or yeah. We're not home enough to have our own pet. It's the best scenario. Yeah. Have family that have <laughs> pets and then you can give, give them back. back. <laughs> food you love? Um, my favourite food has got to be lasagna. Like a good, crispy... Yeah. Yeah. And garlic bread. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Food you hate? Growing up, it was definitely sprouts. But as I've matured <laughs> and uh, eat my greens, it's not an issue. But yeah, definitely growing up, it was sprouts. <laughs> uh, what advice would you give to your younger self? Don't take life too seriously and don't make decisions too quickly. What's the best thing to happen to you? Definitely my two boys. Yeah. Who's your hero? My dad's my hero. I think if it wasn't for my dad, I probably wouldn't be where I am today with my career. Wow. He worked extremely hard to give us what we needed, um, me and my sister and my brother. Um, really pushed our education, sent us to different secondary schools than our friends to really give us that push. Um, oh, wow, really? But at the same time, kept us grounded. Right, wow, sounds like an amazing mm, yeah. bloke. She's definitely my hero. Um, I have had some in- influential leaders as well along the way in my career. Um, you know, you always look at your leaders, don't you? I will take that from them, but I won't take that. Um, yeah. I've definitely had uh, my w- very first ward manager has had a huge impact on my, my career and certainly my standards wow. moving forward. And finally then, something very few people know about you. 
Um, probably like I'm a middle child. I've got an older sister who uh, is a teacher and a younger brother who works for the tax office. <laughs> so, do you think you, so do you think you come across as the eldest normally or the youngest? I've definitely got middle child syndrome, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that patient experience that you were talking about. How has that sort of shaped what you do as a nurse? I think when um, I had my youngest son and he was poorly when he was born, I was only 25 at the time. So, I was, you know, I was still very young mum myself, but mm. having been a nurse and you, you do know a lot, so it is very difficult being on the other side. And you know what your IPC precautions should be. Yeah. You know, that's just one example. You know how people should be communicating with you and keeping you up to date. So your expectations, I think, are, are different. But yeah. at the same time, I was talking about this to somebody last week. You probably tolerate more um, being on the other side, right? Being a you know a, a carer or a patient, um, but I think for me it just gave you know it was five years. Hiya, yeah, you're right. You know he was a, a patient for five to six years in wow. total, so it was a long time. That has definitely impacted on how I have tried to lead my, the teams going forward and really making sure that you do utilise your patient and family feedback to make those changes to yeah. their clinical areas or practice because, you know, unless you do listen to your feedback, we're not going to get it right. Did yeah. it change your nursing immediately? Did you think, oh my goodness, like, what a difference I now have Abs in terms of perspective? Absolutely. I think it definitely strengthens your higher, strengthens your communication skills because you've absolutely got that lived experience of their expectations and how people would explain things to make oh, yeah. it easier for the patients and families to understand so yeah absolutely so without that do you feel like you'd have been a different nurse i don't think i would have been different as a, a nurse myself but i think i it's shaped how i challenge some things as a as a leader in an organization it's definitely shaped how i would you know re review our complaints and concerns but also compliments as well so where's nursing headed then in the future obviously a lot of services you see across the country are trying to do things more in people's homes and communities where is it going here at the walton center I think for the Walton Centre, we do all we already do a lot of outreach. You know, the the specialist nurses and the medical teams already go to a lot of our patients' local trusts mm. and see them there to save them travelling to the Walton Centre. You know, we we care for patients as far as the Isle of Man, don't we? Um, I think for me, our main priority is making sure that we keep that workforce available to right. that. I do think we already do that really well, you know, outreaching to our patients. And do you think that things like telehealth and like video, do you think that's still a, an important part? I think for the Walton Centre, it has to continue. When I do chief nurse check-in with our specialist nurses, some of their concerns is around outpatient capacity. So I think we have to make, you know, carry on doing that, um, teams, appointments. But I think it's important to give the patient the choice. Yeah. Not all patients want that video call or, you know, that telehealth. They want to come and see their consultant or specialist nurse face to face. So whilst I do think it's something that we've got to carry on with, I do think that patient choice needs to be listened to as well. You said about patient experience earlier. Uh, why is that so important? I think some of that is definitely around my time in haematology. Um, you know, we had to do a lot of information sessions and make sure that that communication was so strong for our, our patients and our relatives. But I think from a, an early age, from having one of my children, he was born poorly and we were in and out of Old Hay, Great Ormond Street for five years. Being on the other side is definitely a, a difficult experience, but also 
you you have a level of expectation how I look at things moving forward it's it's definitely impacted by um you know communication you you understand when you've got a poorly child in front of you just how important communication and patient experience is so I think that personal lived experience uh, really helped uh, yeah and what do you think looking ahead looking to the near future far future what do you think the challenges are for the Walton Centre for the NHS do you think you know, for most organisations, is about workforce. Yeah. It is about patient flow, you know. We're, we're well aware here at the Walton Centre that organisations surrounding us are having a really difficult time in their emergency centres, um, you know. So I think it's definitely that focus on A&Es, how can we get our patients seen as quick as possible in the most appropriate place with the right workforce. Mm. So it's all about maybe pulling together, working together with yeah. the other trusts in the in the area. Yeah. For anybody listening, like I did allude to it earlier, um, I've now only just about got that full nursing team. So mm. I am trying to make sure that I'm out there, I'm visible, I'm working alongside the nurses, the AHPs. Um, so, you know, if anyone does want me to come and see how their area works, then, you know, please let me know and I'm more than happy coming shadow get that uniform on yeah. and scare everybody as you're walking down yeah. the corridor yeah thanks for listening to neuro stories you can listen to more episodes on spotify and apple podcasts and you can stay up to date with the latest news and events from the hospital on our social media channels at the walton center on facebook and instagram and at walton center on x If you've got any feedback, email the communications team at wcft.communications at nhs.net. This podcast was recorded, edited and hosted by Sam Fleet from the Walton Centre's communications team.